the topic for today's high tea at IT at 3.30 is going paper free. I couldn't figure out how to make that. Anyway, uh, going paper free. What is paper free? utilize in paper and bringing them to the new technologically digital age, making them available everywhere. Convenience mm -hmm. is one of the reasons why you want to go paper free. You'll have access to everything anywhere. Never say, oh darn, I forgot that, or I have no idea what time my meeting is, or not sure what my reservation number is. Uh, it minimizes waste, meaning that landfills are less full, trees are less dead, <laughs> and, and so it's more environmentally friendly. Uh, declutter. You can declutter your life. Some people, like me, have just tons of paper, slowly trying to get rid of it, digitize it all, and of course, sharing with others. Right now, if you have a piece of paper, you have to Xerox it, or stand over it, everybody look at the same paper at the same time, you have to make copies of it, but if you want to collaborate and share information with others, it's so much easier when it's in digital form. So as I said, paper free is replacing information normally stored on paper with its digital equivalent. Uh, Pomona has actually already started doing this. Some of these things you're probably extremely familiar with, <coughs> some that you haven't had a chance to touch, but or, or don't even think about that it's a paper free initiative. Uh, Sakai, for instance, has taken a lot of coursework and put it online. Long gone are the days of Xeroxing books for students and handing big packets of paper. Now the students can go and print their own paper. <laughs> so now the students can download it online, read it online without having to ever print. You can have a syllabus available without having to print and pass out syllabi at the beginning of class. Um, make other materials available for students, all without, which they can access 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On Base and Workday are two different paper-free initiatives that we have implemented recently for taking invoices, records, college, any college information and taking it out of the filing cabinets and putting it up on servers and up in the cloud. Uh, Workday, as everybody knows, is probably, people probably have nightmares about it because it's brand new and we're all learning it together, uh, but it, this is part of the initiative, getting off of paper. Things that you might not have thought that are paper free, but you notice are handbooks, staff directories, things that have been coming out in digital format, uh, resources on the Pomona web and the My Pomona portal, job applications. We no longer have to fill out job applications and hope you have good penmanship. <laughs> uh, and just finding information, no more printing of brochures and handbooks. Everybody can find the work they need online. Again, saving paper. Now, the pa with paper free, I just divided it into what I call the three R's, and you can see I stretched that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've got reading, we have writing, and archiving. Yeah, close enough, right? And, and the topics are close enough. There, there's three different ways that you can incorporate being paper free. Now, I've already talked about some of the initiatives that Pomona is doing to be paper free. Uh, but one of the things I want to talk about is how you can start to integrate paper-free just into your everyday life. Things you wouldn't even have thought of. Uh, now to do this, you might need a little bit of technology. Of course, this is IT. Your computer or your laptop is going to be your best paper-free friend. But having a few accessories will greatly help your ability to become paper-free. Uh, a tablet, I found, has been one of the most important pieces of transitioning from notes and paper to being able to run paper free and a smartphone smartphone you might not even think about your smartphone as being a paper free tool but it is it's always in your pocket it's always with you meaning your information is in, always in your pocket it's always with you uh, a scanner been around for a while kind of a handy old friend a lot of you have them on copiers the big copiers that you can just convert everything into PDFs and it emails right to your box. It's beautiful. Then you can distribute them without having to print. Wonderful. 
Uh, personal desktop scanners as well, represented by that, but any type of scanner will do. And the stylus. Some people have complained that typing is cumbersome because you need something like this little Bluetooth keyboard here, have extra stuff to slip around, or you prefer to write with hands, you prefer the feel of a pen in your hands. Statuses can help with that aspect as well. And we'll talk a little bit about those in a bit. Many of the things I'm going to talk about in terms of technological gadgets and accessories <coughs> are geared toward iOS, but that doesn't mean that um, there aren't equivalents for Android. How many of you have iPads or iPhones? Okay, well then, very good. So most is up. You'll all find this relevant. Uh, if you have Android devices, there are a lot of the programs that I'm talking to talking about are cross-platform, meaning that you can find either the the application on the Google Play Store, or you can find an equivalent, some the app that does the same thing as the one that I'm talking about. So, and I'll denote the ones that are iOS only. All the Computer software I'm talking about is cross-platform, so whether you're using a Mac or a PC, you'll be able to do the things that I talked about here. Okay, so back to those three R's. Reading, the one that actually begins with R, uh, it's your library in your pocket. One of the things that really kind of, I think, catapulted, catapulted the tablet technology was digital readers, Kindles, the Nooks, and that functionality still exists and it's still a very important part of being paper-free. Now, to endeavor upon paper-free reading, there's an app for that. And for each of these R's, I'll present some apps that might be useful to you. Uh, just really quickly, I'm gonna be, I'll get into more depth later. Good reader, reading PDFs. Kindle reader and iBooks, great for eBooks. Zinio is for digital magazines. And of course, your favorite newspaper app is represented in this icon. LA Times, you can pick whatever paper you want. They all have apps. <coughs> All right, so the first thing, embarking paper free, the easiest thing you can do is ditch the dead trees. Ebooks are wonderful things. A lot of people that I've talked to, I've had, of course, these holy wars about ebooks versus paper books, and people like the smell, the, feel, the feel, the weight. I don't like the weight of books. But um, so there, there are certain things that have a certain appeal about paper books. However, one thing you can do because of the weight is carry your entire reading library in your pocket. With ebooks, since everything is just a digital file, you can have the entire Harry Potter collection in, your, in the palm of your hand, you can have all the books that you're reading for a research project that you're doing, you can have all your cookbooks available in one place, all at the same time. Travel books, you're planning a trip, you've got five different travel books that you're working on, no need to schlep out the big library, you just have it right there in your hand. You can read where you are. There are times when you don't realize that you're going to be sitting waiting somewhere, picking up your kids at school, you're in the dentist's office, you're in the bathroom, you're on the train, anywhere. Anywhere you go, anywhere you have your device, you can sit and read. So if you have time to kill, you always have your library in your pocket. You can always read. You can switch devices and pick up wherever you left off. A lot of the readers, like Kindle and iBooks, have desktop equivalents. So you could be sitting at your computer and reading and then um, get on the train and finish your book, finish the documents that you're reading. <coughs> I might put whisper sync there, that's what Kindle calls it, whisper sync, you'll see that. You can search, because it's digital, you can search, words are words. The search functions are much better than indexes and flipping through copies of paper books. And of course you can annotate and dog eater and write all over it without feeling bad about destroying an actual physical book. Because some books are actually very beautiful and you don't want to damage them, but they still need to be useful. Now, one of the questions is, which ebook provider do you choose? As you're cons considering embarking upon ebooks, one of the things you have to realize is that when you buy them on one platform, they stay on that platform. So if you were to go Amazon, your books would be on Amazon, but if you bought one on iBooks and one on Amazon and one on whatever the book reader became, then you have different places for your libraries. So if you want your library all in one place, you should settle on a one reader right away. Amazon is compatible with more devices, so if you are a Windows user, definitely go Amazon. iBooks is only available for iOS and Mac. 
unless you're planning on just reading it on any Mac you own and just iOS devices, you'll probably want the flexibility of Amazon. Amazon, the prices are a little better too. Uh, the reading experience in iBooks is a little better. It's more elegant. The sync works really well. So that's the trade-offs that you have. Both Kindle and iBooks will read PDF files. So if you have PDF files that you need to read, you scan something in your big copier in your office and you want to be able to read it, you can use either of those readers <coughs> or you can use Goodreader. And I actually like Goodreader for reading better because I like the annotation tools. So. And Goodreader, I think it's a $4.99 app on the App Store. It's definitely well worth the money to have. A couple other things to keep in mind on reading. Reading on screen takes a bit of getting used to. So don't be afraid to play with the controls. The technology is there for you. Don't feel bad if you have to make the text really, really big. It's OK. Or if you have to flip black and white. Or you can adjust the brightness. If it's too, you're in a dark room, it's too bright, just turn down the brightness on the, the reading app. Can't do that with real books. Uh, but you can make the technology make it easiest for you to read. That's why also uh, for elderly who have harder time reading, from what I've heard, a lot of them take better to ebooks because you can make the type bigger. Newspapers, most newspapers have apps, but they also have online ver or versions that work really well with mobile. <coughs> I find that sometimes the mobile versions are better than the apps. So either way, I, I actually I'll flip between the two, but usually it seems like there's more information on the, the online versions. Digital magazines, while the concept sounds really nice, you can have big splashy Time magazine, or it, they haven't quite got the technology down right enough, but good enough to make it functional part of the ebook ecosystem. So check their websites instead. Does anybody have any comments, questions on reading online? Yes. I usually prefer the Google Reader a lot of times to the Kindle one because of some of the ebook formats it takes and different styles and you can but you can import uh, PDFs really easily into the Kindle one if you do the convert feature. So. Um, yeah that's true. There are some I think like um, what is it, ebook? There's one format that one supports in terms of iBook and and Kindle that one supports and the other doesn't and there's another format. But it sounds like Google Reader you said? I haven't used that one yet. Or Google Books. Yeah. Google Books. And that one probably plays a lot better with the Play Store, which is one that I did a store I didn't mention because we're a little iOS centric here. But <laughs> but yes, Google Play is the the App Store equivalent of it's like the iTunes equivalent of the Android world for those of you who have who haven't used Android. Any other thoughts, suggestions, things you want to share? Because going paperless is a journey. We'll get to the second R: writing which I use writing as kind of a general term. We're really talking about productivity in your pocket. So we talked about the passive sort of thing, consuming media. Now how do we produce media? How do we, how do we be productive on the road, on the train, on the bus, in the dentist's office? Well, as expected, there's an app for that. As you'll notice, Goodreader makes a, 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 its presence in this category as well, because it is excellent for annotating PDFs. OneNote. How many of you have used OneNote? How many of you have used Evernote? Okay. Both of those are the same type of program. Note taking. Sorry. Office Lens turns your smartphone into your scanner. And we'll talk about that in a bit. And then, of course, you have Microsoft Office. Fairly new on the tablet playing field. Very exciting. You can actually have real versions of Microsoft Office in your pocket. Mobile Microsoft Office. So there's actually a couple ways to get to Mobile Microsoft Office. One, if you have a web browser, you can get to, with a Microsoft account, which is available free, you can get to online versions of the full Microsoft Office. So if you have a computer and you don't own Office, you can still use it for absolutely free online on a web browser. And it works really well, looks really nice, um, no complaints about it. If you're on a computer that is so you're in a, a different country and the computer is not in English and you don't speak the language the computer is in, it might be useful to visit the mobile Office 365 site. You also have the, the apps that I talked about, the Office apps for Android and iOS devices. Now these are free as well, but their feature set is limited. Office, Microsoft wants you to subscribe to Office 365. 
So as kind of an enticement, they, while they give you the apps for free, some of the features are locked and you need an Office 365 account to unlock them. When Pomona will get Office 365, I'm not entirely sure. The students have access to it, but right now faculty and staff do not. So. And of course, you can use Office to create and edit documents on the go, save them in the cloud, so your documents are always with you. Just a couple of ideas for using Microsoft Office. Uh, Excel is great for databases. You can make a database of anything, uh, like your CD or DVD collection. I don't know how many times I've come home like, I bought The Hobbit already, darn it. You know, so you can actually keep track of what you own, any kind of collection you can keep track of. You can do budgets, expenses, uh, if you're working on travel. You can use PowerPoint to create a slideshow that you can you know, take around to the family and show them that without having to print pictures and make photo albums. Anybody else have any other thoughts for? Okay. Now OneNote, I use OneNote, but Evernote is an equivalent. Evernote has some premium features that you have to pay for. OneNote is just kind of completely free. Um, the notebooks, notebooks, are, these note-taking programs basically let you collect a variety of things. You can collect receipts, notes, graphs of information, tour lists, any sort of little thing. Um, and they're all stored <coughs> in a single place and then they sync to the cloud so you can access them from any device. Like for instance, we are going to be accessing them from this device. So for instance, uh, you can use OneNote to keep track of things like the key, the, the password for your wireless router. I do this because it's really long and cumbersome and I have guests that come over, I'm like, here, just type this instead of having to remember that. You can do, you can save receipts. You can even annotate receipts like, ooh, get the Belgian waffles again. <laughs> now, way to save paper, instead of getting, making the pump, print out a receipt, take a picture. Stick it in here. Oops, that's not the screen. Mark, you know, it's filled up. You can annotate things. And my favorite, of course, having computer problems, <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> this is so helpful to me. Take pictures and send it to me. That really helps us. Uh, inventory, home inventory. If you're trying to, if you get like my new printer, for instance. Well, I want the serial number. I don't want to write it down because I'll forget where I put it. You can put it in OneNote. You can add notes to it. You can, I purchased this blah, blah, blah. You can put the receipt in here. So you have everything that you need to know about your new item that you purchased. And of course, need to remember knob settings or any sort of settings or how to hook up your stereo or how your TV is hooked up. You take a picture. You can annotate it and say, okay, this plugs in there. Or, you know, these knobs need to be set like this. You can keep all that stuff at the two fingers <coughs> in a note-taking program like one now. Okay. Anyway, one note is nice because it's cross-platform and cross-device. So, just some thoughts that you can do. Collect, collect if you're starting a project, just start to gather information, download things from the internet, copy and paste things in. Um, you can. If you're taking a trip, collect all the documents, all the receipts, the reservation forms, bus tickets, train schedules, throw them all into a notebook in OneNote. Or chore lists, honeydew do lists, grocery lists, shopping lists, wish lists, your Christmas time is coming, get me this list. And then you can, you can make these lists and you can share them. So share the chore list with the kids, share the honeydew list with the spouse, you can also, like I showed earlier, create a home inventory, take pictures of everything, get the serial numbers, just so you have that information. If your house burns down and your work falls into a great big crater, all your information is still stored on the cloud. Good Reader is what I like to call the PDF Swiss Army Knife.
That is your one-stop PDF shop. It connects to various different sources, <coughs> like through Google Person. It does connect to Google Docs. It connects to OneDrive. It connects to, you can even get it to connect to your portal user space with some wrangling. Um, connects to OneDrive, connects to Dropbox. It, it even connects to, if you have something set up on your computer. And it has some great annotations tools. As you can see there on the side, you can highlight things, you can add text, you can even freehand draw. It is, I've, I've discovered it's kind of the best PDF reader that I've run into. I, I did a, um, a webinar conference and I got, I know I didn't give you guys the notes, but I got the, the notes in advance and so I brought them up and I used my stylus and I was just taking notes on the, the PowerPoint slide notes and all in good reader. It was really, mm. it was really kind of a successful paper free adventure for me. Is that free? Good reader is about five dollars. Five dollars. And they're, they're, that's one of the apps that's iOS only. So if you have an Android device, it doesn't exist on Android. It just exists on iOS. Is it five dollars a month or just one? No, month? no. It's once you. I think it was. I think it was five when I got it. It's it it an app that you buy from the app store. It's just one app. Okay. So. It's, it's been well worth it for me. I've been using that for a few years. I really like it. Now, one of the things that it that I do f use it for sometimes, too, is you get a PDF and you're like, well, I can si print it, I can sign it, I can scan it, and then I can mail it. And that seems like a waste of paper and a waste of time. But with, since you can annotate with a freehand tool in Goodreader, what I'll do is I'll open up the PDF in Goodreader, and I'll just sign there, save it, email it directly without having to do the print and scan piece. So. That's one of my favorite things. You should never have to print scans. <laughs> you can also download files from various sources I also mentioned. One of the things that, you, if you use Box, how many of you have Box accounts? Good. So if you use Box, one of the things is you can't directly use the Microsoft Office apps with Box the way Box currently sits. There, there's a setting that has to be set and I think it was turned off for security reasons. But it's, it, uh, it's working actually. It is working the now. Office online, yeah. Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> I know it was part of it was discussed, but yay! Well, never mind then. You can just uh, disregard point number three. But if you really want to, you can download things into Goodreader and then open them up in Office. But that's a very good news about Box. Yay! All right, so I mentioned a little bit about using Goodreader and annotating PDFs and signing PDFs. And so I thought I would talk a little bit about styluses, or styli. <laughs> I said styluses. That's the beautiful thing about language. You can, you know, you can take it and make it your own. Um, so anyway, most styluses have a soft, bulby end. How many of you have a stylus? Okay. But they have a soft, bulby end, as you're aware. And it doesn't quite feel like writing with a pen. Some are better than others. Some are are free during the health fair that we have every year and have a real live pen on the other end of it. Do not use the real live pen on your devices. Just a warning. <laughs> Some apps um, don't have the, the ability to discern when you're writing, but usually when I write, kind of rest the palm on. Of course, if you're lefty, you're going to rest the palm that way. For a touch screen, a touch is a touch. And so if you're resting your palm on the screen while using a stylus, it may register your palm as a, a mark. And so your document might get marked up. So one of the tricks for using a stylus is you do have to kind of write a little funny. You do have to make sure that you don't have your palm on the screen. There are a couple of exceptions for that. Now this one right here, I don't know if you can see, but it's got a blinky blue light. This one is a Bluetooth stylus. It's made by Wacom, and it's a pressure-sensitive stylus, meaning that, like a normal pencil, when you press down, you notice that it, um, your, your mark gets thicker, and as you lighten up, your mark gets lighter. This pen can reproduce that on an iPad. So, and the applications that work with this can also discern the difference between the touch of the pen and your wrist. And there are certain applications that work with certain pens. 
This is one, and Do It is another maker of these Bluetooth styluses. So if you are, especially if you're planning on doing drawing, art, or just a lot of writing, it might be worth it to invest in a, a higher end pen. They do take batteries, they are Bluetooth, so. This one does not take batteries, it's available free at your local health fair, or conference. <laughs> <laughs> Collect lots of them, seed them everywhere, so you always have a stylus. This right here is a tablet. This one's a little vintage, I confess, because I haven't gotten any one of these in a while. This is a Wacom tablet, and what this does is this hooks up via USB to your computer and allows you to write on the computer. This one, because it's a specialized pen, it doesn't have the same problem with the palm because the tablet surface isn't pressure sensitive, it's reading the pen. As opposed to when you're using a tablet, the screen is all touch sensitive. Mm -hmm. So this is one way if you want to draw or write on your computer itself. These kinds of gadgets exist. So this one's a little vintage, you can kind of tell by the colors, but Wacom still makes them. Um, on the low end, the Bamboo series, about $200. They have some that have actual touch screens on them. Those go into the thousands. They might have come down though, since. But that's how you can get pen technology and writing on your computer screen. And it does take a little bit of hand to eye, because instead of writing directly on it, like you're used to doing with a piece of paper, this is actually writing on a secondary source and then doing some kind of strange eye-hand coordination to figure out where that corresponds to the cursor on your screen. Now the other way to write, and this I have to confess is probably one of the coolest gadgets ever. This is a Microsoft Surface tablet. And this has one of the best pens I have ever, ever seen. I probably should have brought something to put it out to. But it's got a big enough screen that maybe we can all see it. So as you can see, it's just a Windows slot top. This is running Windows 10 which we don't support, no returns installing yet. This is running Windows 10, and the pen is pressure sensitive, and when you write, it's, you can write your name. I'm not left-handed, that's why this is looking so terrible. Actually, my penmanship is terrible anyway. But you can see, it's, it's very responsive. <laughs> it's pressure sensitive. If you were gonna do a lot of handwriting and have an extra thousand dollars to spend, this is an awesome device. And this is a supported device that we at ITS will support if you endeavor to get one. But best pen ever. There's also um, the Galaxy tablet has the Galaxy S Pen that I've heard is really nice too. I haven't had a chance to get my hands on one, but I've heard that one is really good too. Um, I kind of touched a little bit on this. If you are planning to do some a lot of handwriting. You want to take notes, longhand. There's an app that's cross-platform. It does both Android and iOS called Bamboo Paper. It's actually made by Wacom, the people that make my fancy little Bluetooth stylus. And it's free, so download it, play with it, draw with your finger, draw with your stylus. Um, use it to make diagrams. You're, brain, you're at a brainstorming uh, session and you want to like draw a diagram or hey, I want this to look like this. You can sketch and doodle and, and you know, get things done like a whiteboard on a tablet in a coffee shop. And then, of course, I mentioned the Wacom tablet on the computer. And I mentioned a little bit as artists. If you're going to do art, you do want the pressure sensitive because, again, like you're, a lot of times with art, the stroke matters, whether it's dark, light, a lot of the um, applications will simulate different types of paper. So if you want to draw something that looks like charcoal on a linen paper, there are apps that you can use to simulate that. Uh, my favorite drawing app that has some different papers and different brushes and colors is Procreate. Um, Autodesk Sketchbook is another one that, I, it's okay, I like that one. Pixelmator I just started using and playing with, so. And then, of course, on your computer, we do have the Adobe Creative Cloud. And some of you might have Adobe Creative Suite 6. Some of you might have Adobe Creative Cloud 2014. Um, those are excellent programs for doing art on the computer, or doing photo editing, or desktop publishing, 
and you can it can be a completely totally paper free thing. You can create your flyers and instead of going to the printer and spending all this money and getting them printed and having boxes and paper cuts, you can just send it out by creating PDFs. Which brings us to our final R, which is archiving. It's going to be your life in your pocket. Everything you've ever owned. If you're if you're a digital pack rat like I am. The, the thought of having everything you ever own with you all the time puts a smile on your face. <laughs> Certainly can't do that with a big old file cabinet or books. But since data is very small, it's very easy to take with you. And as expected, there's an app for that. Some of these you've seen before. Good Reader, again, a good place to start archiving. Box, you all, most of you have box accounts. If you don't have a box account, you can get one for free directly from the My Pomona portal now. We just put a create your own box account in the portal. So if you have any questions on that, just give us a call at the service desk. We can get you all set up with Box. Box is online cloud storage. Office Lens, that is the uh, turn your iPhone into a scanner. Adobe Acrobat Pro, everybody should have Acrobat Pro on their college machine. Acrobat Pro is the program that lets you create, build, combine, fold, spindle, mutilate PDFs. It's, it, Reader lets you read them, Acrobat Pro actually lets you modify those. And while it's, it's an expensive program to go buy if you're just going to buy it from home, your <coughs> college computer does have it, so take advantage of having it. And of course the camera app on your phone. Now, I, I, the most important piece of paper-free in actually all of these, reading, writing, and archiving, is cloud storage. Cloud storage has really kind of opened up being able to have everything with you everywhere all the time at your fingertips. There's no disks to lose, no hard drives to die at midnight. <laughs> you lose all your data. Uh, they're accessible from any computer or device. Now, you notice while I was looking for something, I just brought up my, that same PowerPoint presentation on my iPad, which it's off now. Anyway, yeah, so you can bring it up any device. Your projects are always with you. They're on your phone. If you have an Apple Watch, you can get to it. If you have a Surface tablet, you can get to it. Your device is everything, everywhere. And you can share files and collaborate on projects with others. Even if they are far away on the other side of the world. Now Box. I've mentioned it a little bit. Box is our cloud storage, as most of you know. You get 50 gigabytes of space. And think about how much 50 gigabytes of data is. That's a lot of data. As long as you're not putting a lot of pictures and movies up there, tons and tons and tons of space. If you're just doing documents, PDFs, you, you can just consider it unlimited. But of course, data grows. Uh, but you can share files in Box very easily with any of your colleagues. There's a built-in address book. You don't have to think, oh, what's Trisha's address? You can just type it. It just pops right. Type it in. It just pops right up. You can also use Box to share with people outside the college. So if you are working on a project with a colleague that is across the country. You can put a bunch of files there, you can both work on the files, add data to the files, create data sets, and just share them without even having to be in the same state or country. There are two different pieces that come with Box, and you may or may not have these installed on your computer. Box Edit lets you edit files from Box. Without the Box Edit piece, you would just be able to view the files in Box on a web browser. Box Sync lets you work on your files on your hard disk. What it does is it looks at what's on the server and it looks at it, it looks at a specific folder and it synchronizes them. So then the files act like files on your hard drive, but they're synced to the cloud. So they're available anywhere. I make a change on my laptop, my laptop crashes, well I can still pull it up on my surface because it's up in the cloud. Mm -hmm. But the file reside a copy of the file resides on the hard drive. So I really like box sync. And if you don't have Box Sync on your computer or Box Edit, just let us know and we can help you install those. And you can ignore the bottom one because I've been informed that that is no longer an issue. <laughs> Box has something called Box Notes, which you can just, it's a little bit like Notes in Evernote where you can type information, you can gather pictures, PDFs, etc. So you can use Box Notes as shopping list, wish list. You can add photos directly to Box. One thing I was doing when I was doing inventory for <coughs> computers is instead of writing everything down, I would just take a picture and I had a folder in Box called Inventory To Do and I would name the file with the person's name 
And so I would take a picture of the, the, the service or the serial number and the information, put it in that folder, and then when I had a chance, I sat down, brought up that folder, and entered all the inventory information. So, yes? Hey, Mel. Um, the box storage for the college is for college related documents, though, right? We shouldn't be storing personal stuff on our box accounts, right? What I do is I have box for my college stuff, and I have a I have used Dropbox for my personal stuff. You can actually go on the box and create a personal box account for yourself. Right. And you can, or Dropbox, or OneDrive, or Google Drive, any right. of those. I like to keep mine very, very separate. Some people merge them in. I keep mine separate. I, I use Dropbox for my honeydew lists and that sort of thing. Right. But these are these sorts of things are available, and it really depends on how you work. Anyway, like I said, you can do things. You can write a story. I actually wrote a story in box notes. I was like, okay, I get, I'm on this mailing list and get a word of the day. So every day I'm just going to pull out my phone and I'm going to write a sentence that contains this word. And I'm going to see if I can make a story with it. So you can do fun, creative things like that, even if it's not quite work related. <laughs> okay, one of the things that the strongest part of your paper free life that you don't really even think about is your smartphone. The camera on your smartphone is like the best paper-free thing ever because it lets you capture information. One of the things you can use your mobile phone for is a scanner. So if you have that receipt or a document and you're, you're not next to your lovely, wonderful Canon copier, you can actually use something like Microsoft Lens to scan the document and save it onto the cloud. Microsoft Lens, I really like. It's something I discovered fairly recently because not only will it scan your document, it will OCR it and you can save it and open it in Word, which is beautiful. So that one I'm kind of fond of. Scanner Pro will scan and that was the one I was using before I discovered Microsoft Lens. Uh, Scanner Pro, there's an Android version as well, so if you're droidy, that would be one for you. But being able to scan and convert images to PDF, combine them, has now come to your smartphone. And so there's no reason to ever carry that piece of paper in your pocket. <laughs> Just to lose it, drop it, accidentally throw it away, or accidentally wash it. Don't wash your phone, though. <laughs> you can also use your camera to take notes and save directly into things like Box Notes or OneNote or Evernote. Those all have hooks for cameras. So you can, as you're going on, you're saying, oh, i got to remember that. Just take a picture. It'll last longer, as they say. And of course, if your penmanship is as bad as mine, then taking a picture is sometimes better than writing things down. Some of you who have me in your, their support areas have seen me go with my camera and taking a picture of wall plates because I will get back and be like, I don't even know what I wrote. So with a picture, I don't have to worry about how badly I write. Of course, you can use it to capture serial numbers for home inventory. I showed you some of the things that I took use my camera for when I was showing you the you know, information. Never forget your device knob settings. Figure out how your TV hooks up. Save paper at the pump. Don't take the receipt. Just take a picture. And of course you can make PDFs from everything. You can scan with a scan traditional scanner, like your wonderful Canon copiers with a desktop scanner on your desk. You can use Office Lens to make PDFs with your phone. If you have a Mac, the Mac has a wonderful built-in PDF creator. So all you have to do is file, print, and there's a little button down at the bottom left to do save as PDF, and you can turn anything from any app on your Mac that supports printing into a PDF. Beautiful for capturing those receipts and, oh, the Groupon vouchers and everything else. You can just create PDFs right from it. Windows, unfortunately, does not quite yet have that capability. Windows 7 does not quite yet have that capability. So, but Microsoft Office does. Most of you, if not all of you, are probably who have Windows are probably using Office 2010. Some of you might still be on 2007 for compatibility reasons. Um, I'm not sure if 2007 has this, but 2010 definitely has. You can do file save as in Word and create a PDF. So anything you can copy and paste into Word, you can just use Word as a quick and dirty PDF creator. Go to your web page. You can print screen and then paste it into Word or PowerPoint and then save as PDF. So a couple more steps, but it's still very doable. 
And of course, as I mentioned, those of you who have those of you who have college machines, Acrobat Pro can save PDFs. It can create PDFs. Some scan. It can create PDFs from, directly from some scanners. Um, it can combine PDFs. So if you went with your camera and you took a bunch of pictures and you want and save those PDFs, but you want to make them all into one big document, Acrobat Pro can be your way to string them together. So some things you can do if you're planning a trip, just save everything, create a folder. I'm um, going to Europe, so create the going to Europe folder, and then as you start to flip book the trip, just save those PDFs and those receipts and those things into that folder. So then when you're at the airport and you, they're asking for your booking reservation and your luggage is a mess and you think you maybe checked it, nope, just bring up your phone. In fact, a lot of them, you don't even have to print out the tickets for flying. You can just save the... Uh, the barcode, walk right up to the airport. Save paper that way too. <laughs> and of course, you can convert receipts, maintenance records, invoices, things that you're already doing with Workday and with OnBase. You can actually do that through your whole life. You don't need paper, you don't need filing cabinets, accordion folders, things you can archive, home maintenance records. The guy came and fixed your air conditioner, don't save that piece of paper, scan it and recycle it. <laughs> Auto maintenance records. I don't know how many times I've been there to get my car fixed, and they're like, oh, when was the last time you had your air filter done? Now I can say, well, let me check. <laughs> <laughs> and you can pull, you have everything all at your fingertips without carrying a big file box and flipping through. Uh, receipts, of course, we've talked a lot about. Recipes, if you're unlike me, and you can actually cook, saving those recipes, those things you get in the paper, you're like, oh, that sounds good, I should make that. Instead of like cutting it out and saving it and then it gets trashed and the cat uses it as a toy, you can take a picture of it or scan it, save it in your to cook folder and then take care of it. Pet vet records, you took your cat to the vet, she cost you lots of money, you can remember exactly when the cat had the shots, when the cat last ate the thing you should have eaten, the dog <laughs> ate the chocolate, that'll all be anywhere at your fingertips. And of course, other ways to go paper free is you can pay all your bills online and get paperless statements. Get an email in your email box when it's time to pay the piper, and then you can go and save those statements as PDFs. Just remember one important thing, kind of jumping back a bit to cloud storage, and when it comes to saving things like financial information. You'll notice here, I didn't put health records or anything, because cloud storage while they do encrypt, you still do not ever want to put super sensitive information. Don't put social security numbers up there. Don't put anything that you don't want hacked. So just keep that in mind, especially college data. <laughs> just a warning. Don't put super sensitive college data up on box. Uh, but you can pay your bills online, save your statements. The statements generally don't have information that would be too incriminating or ID thefty. Um, you can also use apps like Apple Pay, Google Pay, Samsung Pay, uh, and what a lot of these things do is when you pay that way, they'll email you the receipt. So that's one piece of paper you don't have to get. You can change your newspaper subscription to online only, or instead of printing coupons, show them on your phone. Not everybody accepts on-phone coupons, but more and more people are. Groupons and those types of offers, you don't necessarily have to print them out anymore. Just show them on your phone. And of course, you know, there are things you can always do like, uh, if you have a choice between hand dryers and paper towels, use the hand dryers, bring your own cups, cloth napkins. There's a lot of things you can do, even just aside from the paper in your, your life to remove paper use from your life. And of course, I love this guy, but he was holding a piece of paper. I had to actually go in and think, <laughs> that's what I was <laughs> So, I talked a little bit about how I've been going paper-free in life and utilizing some technology. Does anybody have any other things they want to share in terms of fun things they did, exciting things they've learned with gadgetry, paper-freeness? Okay. Well, if you would like, I do have these these bits of gadgetry, if you want to see them, feel them, ask me questions about them, suggestions on what you can do in your life, gadgets, apps, 
you can tell I, I, I love this stuff. <laughs> uh, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, thank you so much for attending and having tea with us. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, I have that PDF you asked for. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> So, kind of a sign of the times is, what do you think today the Mac OS Support Essentials book would look like? <laughs> it would not look like this. It would be on your iPad and you wouldn't have to carry it. <laughs>